welcome to Lost in Movies. I'm Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun. This week I'm joined by... Chrissy Howe. And because we're kind of in the dog days of August, uh, there really isn't any movies that the I want to see. Post-blockbuster. Po yeah, so it's kind of dire straits right now. Um, we're going to talk about... Um, the new it thing seems to be TV shows that are not being remade. They're being continued. Continued. Uh, which is very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And there is going to be actually happening a new Will and Grace, which has already been renewed for a second new season, even though the first one hasn't even come out. That's cool. And Roseanne, um, which is weird because the final season of Roseanne got very strange, and I think they're just retconning that away because... Oh, like it didn't even happen? Like it didn't even happen okay. because... And I can't remember. John Goodman's character. He leaves. Die. He, he dies. He dies. He dies, yeah. But they also, like, their marriage kind of sort of ends. Right. Like, at this idealistic, you know, middle and America. And then the series finale of that show revealed that all of it, all of it was her writing her memoir, right. a fictionalized memoir, and that he'd been dead the whole time. Right. It's like... Uh, okay. Where way, do you go from there? Way, way to undermine your entire show. Uh, but they're just going to retcon, say that season eight didn't happen or whatever season. I think it was season eight. So they're just going to make John, John Goodman's back. He's, he, you know. Cool. Okay. Um, which just, is probably, like, you know. He's on not, fire right now. We right. love him. Um, that's probably a good thing that they're actually doing this, even if it is like 20 years too late because. Right. Fans were so ticked off by yeah. that, that The way series. it ended, and it ended abruptly. Yeah. Like, people expected several more seasons to come along. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and there was, they did this whole big fantasy thing where she'd won the lottery, and it got very, yeah, very silly. Yeah, it got silly. very weird. Yeah, so um, this is kind of correcting course. And the whole reason this happened is because um, Melissa Gilbert um, did a little bit with Jan Goodman on her show, The Talk, I believe. Right, um, right, right. And it was so popular, it went viral. They're like, well, you know what? We could we could, right. we could, could spin this whole thing off. And right. Laurie Matcliffe wanted to come back, and Roseanne wanted to come back, and so they just decided to run with it. Awesome. So that's going to be fun. I think it will be. And then the same thing happened with Will and Grace, where they did a political sketch, mm -hmm. um, and that went viral and was hugely popular. And they're like, you know what? We could bring this back, and this is the perfect time for this show to exist oh, God, again because yeah. we can comment on what's on happening. Everything going on. And it's funny because Will and Grace was a show that I didn't watch as soon as it aired. Mm -hmm. When it started becoming syndicated, you know, you can watch two shows a night. Right. And, you know, I caught it from the beginning through. Yeah. Loved the show. Yeah. I've loved only it. seen an episode here or there, and I so I do want to, but it's one of those shows where it's not readily available for streaming. Exactly. So uh, you can't you can't binge it and catch it all up, and there's a lot that I didn't see, yeah. but really well written yeah. and very well done. Yeah. And, and the four main characters are just... No, yeah, they're terrific. Um, and so even though I haven't watched a ton of that show, I'm actually very excited that that show is coming back. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, Another show, this was a show you mentioned you'd want to see um, come back. Because that's the whole thing. We want to talk about shows yes. that we want the same treatment. We would treatment want to come back, yeah. Um, one that you mentioned, um, that's also another show that's just about impossible to find. Um, it has been just recently released, the entire series on DVD. But it wasn't recent until recently, which is Mad About You. Yes, I'm so excited, though, because I didn't know it was all out yet. It is. The that's entire great. A Ashley and I bought it. The entire series is I'm out on I'm coming over to your house very you, soon. You can. <laughs> um, and that's another show that... For whatever reason, it was a very popular show when it was yeah. out. It was never really syndicated. And it ended I never quickly. See, I never see reruns. I've yeah. never seen reruns for it. It's not available for streaming um, until just this, la this past year. The last three seasons of it weren't even available on DVD. Right. Um, right. So, so that was um, Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser, yep. And Helen Hunt. Yep. Playing a typical couple, they I believe they lived in New York, yep. and of course they had the neighbors and the and the character actors, the in laws and stuff that yep. came in. What I loved about that show is it was extremely real. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite scenes, I don't even know what season it was, had no real words. Mm -hmm. She comes out, he's sitting on the couch, she takes the toilet paper holder and the roll of toilet paper and simply goes and walks out. And yeah. I'm like, real life. Yeah. This is the stuff couples fight about. It's so normal. Right. And it was really great. And then they always have because it was a popular show, and the thing to do in the 90s was to have celebrity guests. Yes. But they'd have people like Mel Brooks. Yeah. And Carol Burnett 
and exactly. they'd have these great comic actors and uh, there was a real love for doing kind of old comedy and Carl mm -hmm. Reiner appeared and this was kind of very much in the style of a modern Dick Van Dyke show which yes. Carl Reiner was very much a part yeah, of. Yeah, it had it had a storyline and, and a, a continuing story but then all these just awesome people would pop in. Yeah. And, and the great. fun thing about Mad About You was um, it existed in the same universe as Friends and Seinfeld. And held uh, its own for a while. It yeah. did, yeah. But I mean, it like there was the crossover because you had um, right? Phoebe um, and Ursula. Because Ursula was, um, was first on Mad About You. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, I can't remember her name now, uh, Lisa Kudrow. Yes. Uh, she got cast on Friends. And so then they decided to do this fun thing where they had them be twin sisters. Exactly. And every once in a while they would cross over. Cross over. Um, so that was fun. And there was one episode um, where Kramer was on Mad About You. I have not seen that one. Um, and That's awesome. it was that Kramer was living in uh, Paul Reiser's uh, old apartment. Paul's old apartment. Gotcha. And so that's, that's the only time they had the show Link. Right. But it's kind of fun to know that all these New York shows existed right. in the same. Right. And they did this thing, Seinfeld didn't participate in it, where there was a blackout. And it actually crossed over all the shows that were airing that night, whenever it aired. So there was a blackout, I think it was caused by Friends, and it also went over into Mad About You. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that, see, now that's one of those series I would definitely want to watch from beginning to end. Yeah. It was amazing. And it would be interesting to see because I think it is, I don't know how many years it's been since it's ended. It's probably been about 15 years, I think. Um, yeah. And so it would be interesting to see because um, the end of that show, which I haven't watched the, the end of the show, but I've read about it, it does a fast forward and you see yeah. the Janine Garofalo is now their adult daughter. Right. So you could play with that now. You exactly. can have Dean Garofalo be a part of the show mm -hmm. as a series regular. Right. Um, and explore that. You can explore maybe she has a daughter now. And so it's them being grandparents. Exactly. Um, so it could be very interesting. Because that's what a lot of these shows are doing now is having it be about the next generation. Because right. you have Fuller House for better or for yeah, worse. Yeah, and that was the one that was just popping to mind. It's like um, they've gone, you know, they took a show we all loved and it's a completely different show. But it has the same cast But it members. has the same cast um, Girl Meets World, which is significantly better than Fuller House. Yes, no. Um, and then they've also done it with That's So Raven. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that one. That's yeah. great. Um, Raven's Home, and it's her and her best friend now have kids. And Interesting. So that's, I actually kind of like, that's one of the few, now that was Disney, not yeah. Nickelodeon. It's one of the few Disney yeah. shows that caught my attention. But I was all about Boy Meets World. Yeah, oh, I love Boy Meets World. And I was psyched because, you know, it was really in real time. Yeah that they would be parents, and you're looking at the age crying, how is this possible? But it's, it, it's true, yeah. it's real time. They right. would have a teenage daughter by That's now. so Raven is a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. Because um, that show only ended a few years ago. Right. And now they have like 10-year-old daughters. It's like a little, yeah. bit, of, little bit of a stretch. <laughs> um, but yeah, Girl Meets World was um, really good because Disney Channel's shows now have a certain tone mm -hmm. that I'm not really a fan of. and. Girl Meets World didn't have that tone. It right. was very much a continuation of the Boy Meets World tone, right. which was nice. Right. I mean, they were de they're dealing with real life yeah. and real high school, but the situations make a little more sense. They're age appro appropriate of what they're dealing with on right. a daily basis, which is what I liked about it. Yeah. Um, a show I'd like to see come back, especially since it does seem that part of the reason these shows are being rebooted is because of the political environment we're in now, mm -hmm. is uh, Newsroom. Yeah. And there's been rumors that they want to reboot West Wing, which would be fine, I guess. But I feel like Newsroom would be better because Newsroom actually used this show to comment on events. Everyday events Everyday that were events. happening like on the news at the time. And so I would love to see how Aaron Sorkin would take on Donald Trump. And part of the appeal of Newsroom is it is sort of this, this fantasy. What, what we could have if we had... A news channel that actually was tried and pushed things and pushed things and then absolutely used every bit of truth right and not just the sound bites that are thrown out at us yeah yeah that um, so really I, cool. I I would love to see that come back um, and then not that it was a great show but Dharma and Greg 
the whole premise of that was you I, had a super liberal yeah, and a and super a, conservative. Exactly. I actually liked Dharma and Gray yeah, I did very too. much. I and mean, it's very sitcom-y. Yeah, it, it was very sitcom. It was done silly, but the, the serious moments were serious. And they were actually, I mean, to their credit, they were both very good actors. They were, and I've always loved Anna Elfman, and I've always felt that she never really got her chance to shine. Right, right. And now, I mean, she she's still performing and still doing work, but... Yeah. I don't know. I could have seen her in, in more starring roles. Yeah, she did this movie um, with Edward Norton and Ben Stiller, which I really love. Very underrated, called Keeping the Faith. Haven't seen it. It's really good. It came out in 2000. It's a romantic comedy. Edward Norton actually uh, directed it. Um, gotcha. And it's um, a... Edward Norton is a priest. Mm -hmm. Ben Stiller is a rabbi. And their childhood friend was Jenna Elfman, who they haven't seen in years. She comes back to their life, and they both fall in love with her. Interesting. And so, that how do they deal fun. with that? That could be very um, fun. Uh, Anne Bancroft is also in it. Oh, Milos cool. Forman is in it. Neat. Uh, Eli Wallach. It's really well done. And the movie could, should have made her a star, but not enough people watched it. That's a shame. It happens sometimes. But I would love to see those characters, because it was their parents. Their parents was like super, super hippie. And then the, the parents on the other side were super conservative. Right. So where would they be on this spectrum? Like, where would they, would, would we be talking about Bernie? Would they be supporting Trump? Like, right. where, where would that, and so it would be interesting. Where would that have gone? Yeah. No, that would have been interesting. And it would be nice to see, like, that Dharma and Greg continue on, and how would they raise their kids right. for that constant, like, push and pull argument. Right. Interesting. Would they have, like, one kid who was, like, kind of like an Alex P. Keaton who is, like, super conservative, <laughs> right. and then one who was, like... A flower child, like probably. I and would it be gender that. reverse? Would you have? Would you have the girl be super conservative and then the son be super? Old? Wouldn't that be a great show, though? Yeah. To bring back, that's you know, one of my favorite family-oriented yeah. shows. And you know what? You, I think it would be smart to to gender reverse it. Yeah. So that it's the little girl who is yeah. super conservative and the boy and the who's boys. like wild and out there. Yeah. I like it. All right. What was the name of that show, though? Alex B. Keaton. Oh, that's Family Ties. Family Ties. Very cool. I was like, I'm like, ah, uh, drawing a blank. And Family Ties, I guess you could try to bring that one back too, but. Right. I don't know. That one kind of just, it had its own it had its universe. Own. And it's and, good. And, uh, yeah, it would be kind of be sad. They tried, Michael J. Fox tried to do a show, and it was kind of just sad to right. watch him. Right. It's just, I, bless his heart, but it was just, he tried to do a show a couple years ago, and it just was very bless. painful to watch. Yeah, because he's. I mean, by all means, the person we all loved, but at the same time, not portraying it the same as he would have. Yeah. Change of subject Change rapidly. Of subject. Firefly. Uh, Firefly, which has been rebooted once. Um, was it? Well, there was this. There was the movie. Well, okay, yeah, that's true. Right. So there was a little bit of closure there, but there's still so much you could explore. Yeah, I had no closure. Yeah. There was no closure for me. Yeah. I was like, give me back my show. Right. Just, I was so angry. But what I loved was the power of the. The power of the fans. Yeah. Because that was a show the network said done, shut down. Right. For whatever, all the reasons they did. The actors didn't even realize their rap party was their rap party because it was a Christmas, it was a holiday party. Right. And they literally, I think they made the announcement like the day before. And so that when they got together, they realized it wasn't just their holiday party, but their, this whole thing was done for right. them. And several people have said it, fan sites, everything. Every single person in that show has said that they would be willing to do that any time oh, yeah. they were asked. I've, I've rarely seen um, a group of actors have so much affection for a show they've okay. worked on, especially only one season. Like, right. everybody loved being a part of that show. And the show had everything. Like, it was Josh Wheaton yeah. universe, because I love him. Like, the man's brilliant, and I yeah. just love him. I mean, as great as Buffy is, I mean... Firefly might be like kind of like the quintessential. Yeah, it kind of had everything that he yeah. wanted in one thing. It had everything. Yeah. It was Space Cowboy. It yeah. was, you know, fighting. It was love. It was. It had everything in it right. in a unique package. So, like, what I loved about the show is, like, I have since purchased the few seas the few episodes we have yeah. and um, Serenity, which was the movie following. Yeah. And watched it with people from all walks of life. And everyone is entertained. Yeah. You know how often you'll watch things in a group of friends and you can you can pick out who's really liking it. Everybody I've ever watched even a single episode with right. 
loves this show. Yeah. And you can't really say that about, say, like Buffy or, right. or Dollhouse or Angel because those are very niche audiences. Yes. Yeah. And, like, I loved them to start with. So when yeah. I saw it, like, and when Firefly came on, I was late in the game because yeah. I'm like, uh huh, cool. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, okay, Josh, we need to go check it out. Loved it. Right. Devastated when it came off the air. And that was the thing. Like, that show was never really given a chance. It wasn't. They, they were changing the days it aired. They ran episodes out of order. Yeah. And so people who were potentially watching it would be like, wait, I'm totally lost. They're I'm lost. totally confused. Yeah, exactly. They didn't know where to find it, what to follow. And, and I believe they didn't even air the pilot. No, the pilot so, was never aired. So How you're insane just is that? You just dropped into this universe. You have no introduction right. to these characters. And you're like... What what's going on? And the storylines that he could have gone with, yeah, were just there were so many. Yeah, it was. I mean, since then, fan fiction has taken and gone in incredible places. Oh yeah, and there's been comics. Yeah, and it, it, everything completely. Been, yeah, but what I loved was the power of the fans. Yeah, they were so vocal about this being taken away from them that it greenlit this a movie, full yeah. feature yeah. length movie about a show that only didn't make it a full season. Yeah. How amazing is that? That is amazing. And it would be great to see if, if it could happen again. And also another Josh Whedon property that could come back is uh, another Dr. Horrible. Oh, God, yeah. Which would be great. Yeah. And, and Josh Whedon keeps saying, oh, I, I want to do it. It's just a matter of finding the time and, and, right. and getting all the schedules to fit together. Right. Uh, right. But that would be another one that would be great. Love it. Yeah. He is one of the busiest men in the TV world. He is, because he went from being Marvel's guy. Now he's over being the DC yeah. guy. Yeah. He's, he was brought in to... He's that versatile, though. Yeah. So, hey. He was brought on. in to finish up Justice League, and right. he's going to be doing a Batgirl movie. Which is awesome. Which is great. Which Bring he's Batgirl. the perfect guy to do Got to, yeah. to do Batgirl. Yeah, and um, see, what was the one... Uh, he just did the second of... Help me. Oh, the Avengers? Thank you. Yeah. Um, his touch was all over that movie. You know, yeah. it was like, it, was re like, it really did make yeah. it better. Yeah, which unfortunately he was kind of a little bit, you know, held back by studio interference. Oh, yeah. Which is why he kind of jumped ship and now he's over at DC. Yeah. Um, but speaking of movies, like, we're not really seeing a lot of, like, we're seeing lots of reboots and, and, and sequels, but not really true continuations. Right, right. And I would really like to see, since Kurt Russell is kind of having a resurgence, mm -hmm. I would love to see some of his old John Carp Carpenter movies come yes. back. Like, a big trouble in Little China. And see, now I'm a purist. Yeah. So as long as it was not a remake, no. I would be totally happy. No, I, I'm saying a continuation. Yeah. Bring him back as Jack Burton. What's he been up to What's lately? What's he been up to? Um, uh, or, you know, bring him back as Snake Bliskin. There was one right. Snake Bliskin sequel, Escape from L.A., and it kind of gets a bun rap. It was okay. It was okay. It wasn't horrible, though. No, like, it wasn't. It didn't deserve the bun rap it got, but, um, yeah. And there's actually, and, you know, there's the technology to do this now. There's actually a comic out now, I haven't read it, where it actually has a crossover between those two movies. No way. Um, oh, that's so how fun would it be to have those two guys, those ter two Kurt right? Russells, in a right. movie together? That would be insane. That would be insane. That would be very It cool, would be though. so much Kurt Russell. People's heads would explode from so much Kurt it. Russell. I mean, but like, and he's still Kurt Russell, though. Yeah. Like, time is not diminishing this man no. in any way, which is awesome. And the funny thing is, because um, Escape from New York was him doing his Clint Eastwood impression. Yeah, yeah. And Big Trouble in Little China was him doing his John Wayne impression. Mm -hmm. So to have them together would be <laughs> That would be a very fun mashup. It would I be like really it. fun. And I think he would be up for it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if John Carp Carpenter would, would be up for it. But if, if even if you just sign off on it and maybe write the script and someone right. else directs it, right. that would be fine. It's like, where do we put this information so that people can see I don't know. Ideas? See, see, people need to watch this episode. I don't know how we can get people because we're just tossing out like, the great come on, ideas. These are the, these are money makers, people. Um, another one, this was one that Ashley suggested to me, was... Father of the Bride 3. I still, I like this idea yeah. because he would be the grandfather he, of the bride. The grandfather we of the really bride. Like that. Father of the Bride 2 ends with him becoming a, an, uh, a father again. Right. Um, in his 40s, 50s. Right. And then his daughter also, you know, he becomes right. a grandfather. So it and would like, be. The crazy, doting, loving father that he was to his daughter when yeah. she was married and when she had her child. 
would just be even like tenfold to his right. granddaughter. And Especially if he has happens. his own daughter and his granddaughter at the same time were to get married, which would be... I love it'd it. Be a, it'd be a stretch for a plot, but whatever. Yeah. And you can bring Diane Keaton back and the bring Steve Martin back. The way these are these days is yeah. not that much of a stretch. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Bring back Martin uh, Short. It could. It would be great. And these guys are all still in their prime yeah. and doing incredible work. I'd and love Diane to Keaton gets more adorable every year. I love her. Yeah. One of my favorite movies I've seen her in in the last few years is Something's Gotta Give. Oh, it's give. great. And it's she wonderful. is still talented and sexy and funny, and yeah. I'm like... She must never die. Yeah. Like, is there a way we can preserve her yeah. forever? Because I just love her to pieces. Um, speaking of seasoned actors that are still awesome, mm. I'm a Bruce Willis fan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because sometimes people are like, oh, I'm so done with it. I'm like, nope, give me Bruce Willis. Yeah. There was a show that predates your TV yeah. watching. And you know, I've, I've heard so much about okay. Moonlighting. Called Moonlighting. So what yeah. it is, is the Moonlighting Detective Agency, mm -hmm. which is very 80s. Yeah. Okay. And he's running it, and then he gets a very well-to-do, gorgeous, it was Civil Shepherd, yeah. um, person that, for some whatever crazy means, ends up being his partner yeah. in this detective thing. So you had everything that tries to be duplicated over and over. So you had the, the strong, two strong male, female characters in crazy situations trying to make this case or this whatever work out. Yeah. They have, tri they have do tried to duplicate it with everything, done well sometimes, but... Yeah. Think of all the shows that have come since then, all the detective shows right. where there's male and female partners and Castle and right. USA ran like a dozen no-name shows right. trying to duplicate the whole magic of this story concept. Castle's probably the one that might have come closest. That came closest in that, like I said, because it did, it was good. I, I enjoyed right. the show. But um, the network USA, I don't even know if USA is still in the air. I, I think it is. But yeah, they but, churn yeah, out they shows. They churned like, out like these carbon copies yeah. of the same, they were trying to recreate that Right. That and magic. I, I, that's another show. We keep talking about these shows that were popular when they were out, but then it's just about impossible to yeah, find, to find them, now. them And so, yeah, that's a show I've always been interested in watching, but it's not on TV. Right. You can't find it streaming. Um, you'd be hard-pressed to find DVDs anywhere. Right, exactly. Uh, so it's one of those things where I'd love to watch it, but how do I find how it? How do I get it? Um, and maybe if it was rebooted, um, that could bring some attention to it. Here's the thing with Bruce Willis. I love Bruce Willis, too, but Bruce Willis... If he's not invested, he checks the out checks out of movies okay. completely. Yeah. There are so many movies he does you now. See, they call it phoning in the scene. Yeah. And he's, yeah. he's a paycheck actor in a lot of respects mm -hmm. now. Um, mm -hmm. And he's apparently a bear to work with. If he's not invested in a movie, he just, like Kevin Smith talked about, he did a movie with him called Cop Out, and Bruce Willis would just was just terrible to work with because he hmm. didn't care. I wonder, though, if a product, something similar to what yeah. he enjoyed before, came back well, to here's light the thing, though. he would like it. Here's the thing. He said the, the one great moment I had with him, whereas I was like, hey, can you read this line like you would on Moonlighting? And he said Bruce Willis like lightened up, and all of a sudden he was, he, he, and he did it. He did it perfect. And it was, that was it, though. But that was a fleeting moment. So, yes, mm. I think. I think I we think, could write a fan letter to Bruce Willis. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, when he's invested, he, he's great. Right. When he does like a Wes Anderson movie or when he did Looper, mm -hmm. he can still be great, but he needs to be invested. Right. It does look like he's somewhat invested, surprisingly enough, in this Death Wish remake he's in. Interesting. Uh, okay. That seems, because that seems like the stuff that he's done so much of, he's probably tired of. Yeah. Like a lot of his, you know, all of the concepts for what he's in yeah. are just so carbon copy. Yeah. Somehow, like, I was just like, oh, God, Death Wish. We don't need a Death Wish remake. And then I watched the trailer, I was like... Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> okay like, yeah, I'm yeah, going to watch that. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I will. Um, so I don't know. Oh, and, and Bill and Ted. That's another one. Because there's been rumors. Oh, I love Bill and there's Ted, There's been though. rumors for years now. And Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter have both oh, said God, yeah. they're down for it. Okay. It needs to happen. And it needs to be them now. Because, well, old. Yeah, I mean, in all concept, they could be close to grandparent age at yeah. this point. Or they could. we could be at the point where we're... They're the age where they are in the future. Right. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they have to go back in. in that would be hilarious. And, uh, and you know what would be hilarious? They have tr still time traveling in these old phone booths, and they right. arrived, like, present day now. And people, people are just like, like what, the hell what is, is that? That? <laughs> that would be fun. They could be, like, the kind of, like, George Carlin role now, because, you like know, rest it. in peace. Right. That would be very cool. See? 
we are not warped minded. No. There are people like us out there. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, this, these should all happen. Uh, let's see, did we talk about Third Rock? Oh, yeah, Third Rock that, and the Sun. Well, it's funny because that didn't even cross my radar. Yeah. But, like, for some reason, that's the first thing to pop in my head. I love that show, though. Yeah. And uh, it did kind of wrap everything up. They go back to the home planet, but, um, and they erase Jane Curtin's memory and everything. Um, but I don't know. I would kind of like, it doesn't have to come back for multiple seasons, but just a one off season right. with them right. in this climate. Exactly. I mean, we used to call them miniseries, yeah. but why not revisit all of these places? Yeah. Because, I mean, and we were talking like before the UK show. Series, yeah, we were talking before. Six episodes. Exactly. We were talking before the show about how all of us in our generation now, I know it happens in every generation, but it just seems like more so now. We want the entertainment that was our solace and our, yeah. our entertainment from the younger time. And I feel like we want because it of this political environment, everyone's going back. Oh, you remember the Clinton era? Yeah. Oh, that was a great time because, you know, Obama's, you know, still a little too fresh for people. So they're going back yep. even further. Exactly. And they're like, oh, yeah, those shows were great. Let's watch those shows. Let's do those shows. Right. Back when, you know, Bush was a crazy kid. Right. Um, another show, and I don't know if it would work, that I kind of was like... That 70s show, which you would have to do it as that 90s show. Because yeah, you it, would. it ended... In the 80s. It ended in, in 1980. It was, yeah. it was the new year for 1980. So if you... It's been a decade since that show ended. No. Yeah. Oh, wow, because I love that show. Um, if you don't think about it. So, so and they were actually kind of playing younger than their real ages because right. they stretched that out for oh, so God, long. Oh, yeah, they did. So if you made it like 15 years later and right. set it in like 1995. That would be fun, though. Um, I'd be interested to see where those characters would wind up in the 90s. Right. Would, if they are still all hanging out together. Right. If the relationship would, would some of them have sold the out and gone corporate. Right, you know, exactly. Would it, you know, would there who, be would, like, who would the red character really be now? Right. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, who would have been the next generation red? Right. I love him. Um, yeah, would they have kids now? How would they be raising, right. raising their kids? Because in all honesty, them raising their kids would be us. For me, it would be like us being raised. Right. That would be my high school era. Yeah. Um, would have one of them have uh, sold out and become a Wall Street guy right. and got like a coke habit and now he's like hung over in the 90s. Probably. Um, what was... Uh, would we ever know where Fez really came from? Yeah. <laughs> um, they need to put it, speaking of se uh, final seasons that screwed things up, they had Fez and Jackie get together at the end of that show. Which was so strange. Which was so wrong on this so many levels. really weird. So, you know, get Jackie and Kelso back together. They're together in real life. Right. So. Might as well have them together right? in the show. Right. They could use their kids. Yeah. It would be great. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think it could work. I mean, especially since there's so much 90s nostalgia now. Oh, God, yeah. No, it, you know. and it's it's so funny. It's like, um, we I, with, you went to Comic-Con, I went yeah. to Comic-Con. Yeah. But the, um, the comics, everything that you can still find from the 90s, yeah. it's just, it's soothing. Yeah. Like, oh, there's a piece of my childhood right yeah. there. I need to have that right now. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we already already went through all the we time. Did. We just went boom, through the whole time. Just boom, puff, gone. Okay. Well, you know, just really quick, yeah. really quick. Because you asked me this question yesterday, yeah. you know, I have been thinking about TV, and I never realized how much TV I actually watched, mm -hmm. yeah. which was kind of cool. Yeah. I'm like, wow, all right. A lot of TV. A lot yeah. of TV. It was a TV generation. Yeah. But yeah, the it 90s was were totally stuff. a TV generation. It was good stuff. Yeah. All right, um, so uh, next week, I think we're going to do The Hitman's Bodyguard, uh, which does look like it's fun. So come back and get Lost in Movies again.